Assalamu alaikum. Well, in this tutorial, we'll take a look how to make your app responsive, which also means that on different devices, they'll look the same, but the image content, text, and things would fit the screen. It means based on screen size, they would adjust themselves. Well, for example, here you can see this is iPhone 8, and uh, this is iPhone 8 Plus, and this is uh, iPhone 12 well of course among all of them iPhone 12 is the big one over here right now as you see the screen is bigger and uh, over here the picture is bigger than iPhone 8 right well the same goes for this section over here and here so based on the screen size their height and width they are a bit different okay well how do I achieve this result and you also see that the top padding based on this uh, screen size or height it changes as well okay so how do I achieve this kind of result okay and of course over here we also see difference the images okay now let's uh, take a look now if you click on this you'll see a page like this you click on this page like this and click on this page like this well as you can see over here the images they all look pretty similar yet small yet at the same time they didn't distort whatever the screen size they all look very good the same goes for this text size over here as you can see over here this is the uh, bigger screen and it has bigger text size than this too same goes for the buttons okay now I have applied the same method for my app the app I'm building over here this mobile app but I decided to make it also as a web app so as I come over here and uh, I can sc scroll through it and as I scroll through it everything looks pretty much similar like this one as you saw early so let's go back and see so over here I have these images over here I also have these images and they're bigger okay so it's it based on the screen size it changes automatically so here I'll show you how to achieve this result in fact it's pretty easy in flatter to achieve a responsive uh, result or make a responsive app which runs on both mobile and as well as on browser okay well to do that in your project file uh, you should have a file where you want to declare all this Paddings and things like that or the sizes if you see well on diff based on different Screen size they have different padding. Okay, so one of the thing you want to do you want to write down the basic padding in a special file You can you can put it anywhere um, Well, I call it app dimensions. Okay, and in my app I've throughout the app. I have used padding 20 30 and 40 Okay and on different screen size i use them as a standard and based on that it scales up or down okay well how to do that so let's take an example first well here say for example i can apply a static method over here so i can create a method and i can call it just a size any it doesn't really matter okay all right so here i want to have a return thing of course i will do that later but here we can do a conditional check so screen size width so screen size width I'll check if it is a certain length or not so here I would do this one and based on this I would return say, say for now say just 20 pixels okay well else return say 10 doesn't really matter okay now what is this web max width well this is something that I have defined over here as you can see web max width well this is a boundary for me to judge an app whether it's on browser or it's on mobile device okay so if it's bigger than this for me I take it as a browser well this there is no strict uh, strict width for this you can take whatever you like it doesn't really matter Okay, but I think this is the pretty much value. Okay, so if it's less than that, that's a mobile device. I mean, it could be iPad, bigger iPad, smaller iPad, including phones. Okay, so based on that, I do conditional check. 
So if the screen size width is bigger than this, I return this, otherwise I return that. So this is the most basic condition that I can do and return. So here, all I'm doing is checking. Okay, now here's another thing. What is the screen size width coming from? Well, this is very important. In your file, in your project file, where you define all this padding and things like that, in the same file, you'd want to get access to the context because we know that in Flutter app, if you have context based on the context, you can access the width and height. So here I have this context or here, this one, the same thing, screen size width, as you can see. So you have to, in the same file, it's better in the same file if you save the context and based on the context, you get the width. Okay, now of course on different mobile device, they will have different context and different width and height. Okay, that's the beauty. So you write it in your file once and wherever it runs based on that, it will get width and height and we can use that width and height. So this width and height would be device width and height. Okay, so wherever it runs, it will send me the value, but of course the value would be different. But here, of course, I'm using get getx package to get this context and width. If you use other packages, you can um, get it as well, but the method could be a little bit different, okay? But the core idea is you have to have a context in the same file. It's better, well, once again, there is no strict rule for this, but it's better you have strict, uh, you, you have the context in the same file, okay? So anyway, based on that context, you get width and height, okay? Now back to the padding section over here. So this is the width I get. So I based on the width, I check it's mobile or it's a web browser. While the screen size is bigger, definitely it's a web browser, okay? So based on that, I can return any of the value or if it's mobile, I can do different things. Okay, with the mobile device, we know that mobile devices, they have different width and height. Mostly the height is different. Pretty much all the mobile devices, they have the same width. So the height is different. So what I would do, I would get the height, okay? So this is the height, all right? Now here I should have a, some factor here. And what is this factor? Well, here then what is factor? Now factor is the magical word that makes our screen width and height and padding and everything dynamic. Well, you can achieve it. How do I achieve this? Well, say for example, this is a factor, this part. Well, that also means that this has some certain value, maybe 20 pixel or 10 pixel. It doesn't really matter. Say for example, this is 20, okay? All right. Well, now you want to apply 20% over, sorry, 20 pixel over here as padding. So what is this word and how to get this value? Well, now let's take a look. Say for example, over here, you want to apply padding 20, okay? So we will use that 20. So that also means that sometimes on larger devices, you want to have larger width or larger padding, okay? Things like that. So based on each device you want to change like for example if you come over here as you see this is a bit different than this one okay but uh, at the same time if your device is a little smaller or larger it'll get changed so it does change it, it changes based on the device screen or width so this is the change we want to make it dynamic but say for example we want it around 20 not strictly 20, but around 20. So what do you do? You take the screen height and uh, you divide it by 20. Okay, in our case, screen height is 844 and we are dividing it by 20. So we get the result of 42.2, 42.2. So here you'd write 42.2. And that's, a, that, that's what makes it dynamic, okay? So wherever it goes, based on that screen size, it will return around 20, more than 20, or 20, or less than 20, okay? So that's how it works, okay? Hopefully it makes sense. Now, another interesting thing is that, while well, you don't have to write like this. You can just simply write very simple way, an easy way, like one line of code in Flatter. So you do double, 
Well, now here we can also call it any time. And over here, we do this checkup first. So we'll write it here and we'll do a question mark. That means if this is true, if this is true, we want 20. Otherwise, we want to return this, okay? So that's how it works. So just one line of code. Instead of writing this function and writing return if else, one line of code solves everything, okay? So now wherever you call it from, what kind of padding you want to apply, it will be either 20 or around 20, okay? Yeah, of course you can have many different scaling factors or padding factors like this, which I have done here, okay? Now, well, we'll take a good example. Well, here we'll take a look how to work with the size. As you can see here, even though the device is very large, but this background color or this background button, gray area is much better than this one here the device is smaller but this is bigger and this is bigger as well the gray area so how to fix it and make it responsive well uh, first we have to find where it is so actually this is over here and this is 150 which fits this one actually but the same hard-coded value doesn't fit here so we need to work on this okay and how to do that as i said early in your file what we will do we'll declare a new section okay and here I'll call it dynamic bottom buttons okay now here I do have a const value which is double I would say uh, bottom button and which is 150 which is this one okay all right now I want to make it dynamic and dynamic calculation so here I'll call static double and uh, bottom button. Here first I'll get the screen size width because first I want to check it's mobile or not or web, web browser. If it's web browser, then we'll use 150. Otherwise, as I said early, screen width divided. Well, now what is the factor? So what I will do, first I will do one, uh, screen size height divided by uh, 150 so screen size is 18844 uh, and uh, divided by 150 so we get the result is 5.6 so if you do 150 then you get 5.63 but of course as I showed early that we need to swatch the value or swap the value so here instead of 150 here I would write one point uh, 5.63 sorry not 1.63 5.63 okay all right so I have this value right now ready now what I do I'll just go ahead and simply call this one call from here okay so I would do dimensions dot 50 okay so this file name is dimensions I mean sorry the class name class name is dimensions so now here I could control save now if I come over here as you see it already changed because now it's running on iPhone 8 plus okay so there's iPhone 8 plus and now this height is much suitable and looks better but of course I didn't uh, restart the app on iPhone 8 so now let's go ahead and restart the app on iPhone 8 and uh, let's see what happens okay so it's launching over here so now let's go ahead and take a look let's open it up yes now this height is much better than the earlier height we have seen in both devices of course this height is always the good one all right so the idea is if you want to make your app dynamic and responsive so you should declare a lot of the constants in a separate file and do a bit of conditional check and based on that you return a value and use that value everywhere throughout your app and you are good to go.